Before we start, I'd like to give a special shout out to Declan Haywood, Gustavo Passos, Jack Williams, Jamie King, Liam Reynolds and Matt GamerGuy666, also to Robber for becoming patrons yesterday. I started a Patreon yesterday, the link will be below in the description. Thank you guys for the support, I love and appreciate it. Peace. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's RDF and I'm back with FM Scout for another video. This time we're going to look in how do I prepare or how do I approach a football match. This video is inspired by Minimal Fuss, he also has a thread on how he approaches football matches on Football Manager, so make sure you go and check that out, the link is in the description below. The very first thing I look at when I'm approaching a football match is the favourites. Of course, this is just from a journalist, odds that a, a magazine has come up with, but it's also a good indication to see where you're at and where your opponents are at. AZ are the firm favourites for this game, so I know when I'm approaching my team talks, I need to be more assertive or more passionate and expecting a good performance. As you can see, I'm the one that's better in form. And as you see here, it tells us the referee and how much yellow cards he gives away and how much red cards. So far, he's ref nine matches this season. He's given away 21 yellow cards. So he's pretty, he's pretty trigger happy. For that, maybe we won't tackle harder in that game. The very next thing I look at is the opposition report. I'm looking for something that jumps out. So here I can see the expected tactical style is route one. So I know this won't be a possession based team. They're more likely to sit deep and they might hit me on a the counter. They might send a few long balls over the top. So I might want to watch my defense line and my line of engagement. Of course, they'll be sitting back. So I'm, I might be looking to bring the line of engagement down. You can do this before a match or you can do it during the match. If you like to stay on your preferred tactic and your preferred instructions, I suggest you leave it. During the match, you can see how it plays out. If you feel you need to make the change, you've already got an idea of what changes you need to make. Already, I know that this team might sit deep, so this might be changed during the match. And I also know that the ref likes to give out yellow cards. I might not want to start and get stuck in. I might just leave it like that. Another thing I look at is the manager's profile. Hey, sometimes you get an idea over here of what he tends to do and what he tends not not to do. He says that he tends to use an offside trap so maybe he won't be sitting too deep during the match. Now that I checked that, it's time to select my team. I always advise people to create a team selection. I just name mine as one. I advise create a team selection of your A team and your B team. As you can see, my centre back is actually suspended. So I need to replace him. So I replaced him with this guy. I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name. I've set my team up now. This is my current best team. The next thing I'm going to look at is my team's condition. As you can see here, my left back, he's pretty tired. He's on 87%. That is not a good start. You don't want to start players that are tired. Your players should be fully fit for matches. I suggest the minimum you should look at is 95% match condition. Match sharpness is also important, but sometimes you need to play players with a low match sharpness in order just to get them to match fitness. But another thing you can do is make them available for your reserves. And now another thing I look at is the form, the player's form, who's currently on fire. As we can see here, these are youngsters, some of the youngsters here. Some of these youngsters are on fire and we are playing against Sparta Rotterdam who are sitting 15th in the league but we are heavy favourites. You don't want to rotate too much and play too much of a weak side but sometimes you have an opportunity to play some of your youngsters and that is exactly what we're going to do. As you can see here, Mohamed Tarbouni, he's pretty on fire. Danny D. Witt hasn't played too great recently so we're just going to make that switch and that's it. We're going to sort our subs out and that's our team. That is how we sit out. <music> opposition instructions now with some people this works some people it doesn't for me it boils down to how well do you know your tactic sometimes you're aiming to sit deep but if you're using tight marking and pressing intensity you are going to drag some of your players out of position but the way i approach it personally isolate their most creative player or their best player on the team goes to tight marking i'd never tight mark the reason behind this, if I'm playing against Man United, they have Rashford, they have Martial. These are pacey players. If I try and tight mark them, they are good enough to beat the tight mark and that can create gaps. 
so my approach is quite the opposite i like to not type mark usually it's an attacking player the most dangerous and i can see here that the right winger is the most dangerous patrick houston he's got okay acceleration decent pace but he's got flair decent first touch dribbling technique vision so what i do is just type mark never i don't want him easily beating my players another way you can approach this so i find an example here we go brad van hooven he's a 19 year old but he's got low composure low bravery low aggression he's not much of a danger not the best first touch either so under pressure he might fold so that can be a good option for you to do tackle harder if you go through the players if they have a preferred foot of right only or left only another good option show on to weaker foot The next thing I want to show you guys is actually the squad personality. They are determined. I feel that if they're professional, determined or ambitious personality for the squad personality, I feel you are more flexible with your team tools. You can get good reactions from being aggressive, good reactions from being passionate and good reactions from being assertive. <laughs> Now from the information before on form, my team are on excellent form. For team talk, I'll be asking them for a very good performance. We are a determined bunch of lads, we are in good form, so I'm determined to keep that form going. So I would either use assertive or I would use passionate. If I am the underdog in this match, being calm is a good tone to use whilst telling your team that you are the underdog, so not too much pressure. But for this match, as we are expected to win, I am going to go to assertive. A team such as ours should be winning or I fully expect you to keep our run going and win this match. That is what I'm going to use. For the players that didn't really respond, I select them I use a passionate tone this time I have faith in you sometimes they react sometimes they don't for shouts when I'm using my shouts I like to look at this match and I like to see what's going on if we're not really creating anything you can go to shouts and you can use creative after 15 or 20 minutes is usually when I use it I will say get creative if it looks like we are not creating enough also if we are very low on possession Sometimes I like to use demand more or show some passion if I feel that we're just giving away the ball too cheaply. Oh, we scored straight away. 40 seconds, we're winding up. What a goal. What a goal. So the first five minutes, we're winning. I like to use praise. Analyst is also another good page. You can click on Sparta Rotterdam. Without the ball, you can see it. Look at this. This is how they're shaped up without the ball. They're very compact and very tight here. After seeing this, I think it's a good option to drop my line of engagement, maybe down to standard to get this defence out because they are sitting very very deep you can see they've got a lot of numbers in defense but we are playing well it's 2-0 come on az come on az go back to the team analysis i don't know if you guys remember but it's it coming out a little bit they're still on the edge of their box oh the ref is giving away a red card so remember what i told you guys before the match that this ref is kind of oh what a free kick we're three nil up now great remember i mentioned to you guys before the match about the referee i already had an idea that the referee is card happy he's already given away two yellow cards and now he's giving away a red braga team is playing very good oh it's far very good football guys i'm i'm i am using my rds braga tick attacker that is over on fm scout we're in at half time at four nil Three of my players are complacent. I hate complacent players. For team talk, as we're 4-0 up and we are an extra man up as well, they got a man sent off. But my team are determined and I'm sure they are determined to carry on going just the way they are. If I ask them to be cautious right now, that might not be a good thing. So I'm actually going to be assertive in this and I'm going to tell them that I'm happy with your performance. Keep it going. I'm being assertive so there's a little, little bit more meaning in it. And for the players that are complacent, assertive again. And there's a lot more to come from you. And they've reacted positively. Before no what, but I want to encourage my players to keep on going. Encourage them. Encourage them to create more. There's the youngster. What a ball. What a goal. What a goal. Devastating counter-attack with 5 no up. As you can see, Izzy, they keep going. Keep trying to break them down. Keep breaking them. Oh, what a goal. This team is playing very, very nice football. Again, with 6 no up, but encourage them. We are a determined team. We want to keep... Oh, what a goal. 30 yards. 
what a goal now sometimes when you encourage them and you check the body language look at that they're all confident and assured very very positive stuff around the hour mark between the hour mark 60 minutes and 70 minutes i do like to make my first change i look at the condition of some players as you can see my youngster here having a very great game we are 7 0 up this is an opportunity to bring on some of your young players of course i'm sure most of you have young players in your team you want them to develop and the best way to develop is game time here we got iman he's a very good winger very good winger so we're just going to bring him on calvin stings is on the hat trick okay inside forward again i'm just going to encourage my players he's just edge oh unlucky as you can see my players they do look encouraged on the field they're taking shots they're running at the defence. It's encouraging football, to be honest. Oh, unlucky. And there we go, lads. 7-0. Now for the end of the match team talk. Of course, end of the match team talk is still important because you want to leave on a high morale. The high morale for the next match is also important. So you want to leave with a very good feedback. Of course, if you lose a match at home, you would want to be more assertive or more aggressive and let them know that you really wasn't happy with the performance. If you do lose away, I suggest you be a little less strict and just say, listen, that wasn't good enough. If you lose that narrowly to a big team, you can say that was unlucky, but I wouldn't be too harsh when you lose away games. If you do lose big away, then I do suggest you be more aggressive and more assertive in your team talk. If you narrowly lose away, I wouldn't suggest you be too harsh on your team. So I'm going to be passionate. I'm going to tell them I'm very happy with their performance everyone's extremely delighted or delighted of course very high morale and that's it guys thank you for watching rdf's how do i approach a football match on football manager maybe next time i will do a video on how i approach big matches of course you can let me know in the comments if you would like to see that please don't forget to like subscribe and comment peace